All creatures were created, all that flew and walked and swam, and also man and woman. Shmukane and Shbiakon, mother and father creator, gave birth to two sons, Hunhun Apu and Vukub Hunapu. And they grew and were clever, and they created a sport, telactily, a sport played with a ball which bounced, a sport of great skill. They developed the sport. They created courts made of stone. This was the sport of the nobles, the sport of the gods. But down in the underworld, in Jibalba, the death demons heard of this sport. The death gods, one death and seven death. And they sent a challenge. And down came Hun Hun Apu and Bukub Hun Apu down into the underworld. And they crossed the river of blood, which was full of demons. And they came into the halls of the palace of the death demons. And there were two wooden figures, and they showed them courtesy. And they greeted them, but the figures did not respond. And then they found that these figures were carved from wood. And they heard the death demons howling with laughter, and the two brothers were shamed. And they were invited to sit on a seat of honour, but when they sat upon it, it was burning hot stone, and they were destroyed, cast into the house of gloom. And there, Hun Hun Apu's head was cut from his shoulders, and his head was put upon a tree. And there in that tree, in the domains of the underworld, other fruit grew. And each fruit was just like the head of Hun Hun Apu. And it was decreed among the death demons that none should touch that fruit. It was forbidden. But there was one, a daughter, Princess Blood, Squig. Princess Blood, daughter of one of the death generals. She came to that place and she saw the fruit growing on the tree and she was tempted. And she plucked one fruit, but you know which one she picked. It was the head of Hun Hun Apu, and the head spat upon her palm, and she was with child. She kept it secret, but soon she was great with child. And her father, the general death demon, he saw this, and when he found out that she was to give birth to the child of Hun Hun Apu, the son of mother and father creator, he was full of fury, and called his owl messenger king to take her squeak to kill her, destroy my daughter, bring me back her heart in a vase. And the owl messengers took Squeak away through the underworld. But there, she persuaded them of her good nature, and the owl messengers could not bring themselves to destroy her. They let her free and instead took a bloodwort plant, and from the bloodwort sap they created a heart of congealed blood. It seemed like a human heart. They put it inside a vase and presented it to the general death demon, and he believed that Squick was destroyed. Princess Blood, Squick, she came climbing, climbing out of the underworld until she came to the world above, and she came to Mother Creator in her hut, Shmukane, and she said, Shmukane, I carry your grandchild, 
Chmuka Ne did not believe her. I will prove it, Mother Creator. You see where the land is barren, there I will harvest maize. And she went into the fields and she cut the corn where there had been none, and she brought back a basket full of maize, <laughs> and Shmukane believed her, and she protected her. And Princess Squeak finally gave birth to twins, not one, but two. And here begins our story this morning. The twin gods, the great hero gods of Mayan mythology, the great story of the Popol Vuh. And they were called Hun Apu, Magic Hunter, and the Balanke, Jaguar Deer. Are you ready to hear their tale? Then open your ears. Unapu, Magic Hunter, the Balanke, Jaguar Deer. They were quick to learn. They played tricks. Their nature was one of tricksters. They were always annoying Shmukane, their grandmother, mother creator. She sent them off. Away with you. I have no time for you. So they went into the forests, and there they created the blowpipe. And with the blowpipe, they aimed at the birds and animals of the canopy. And with poison darts, they brought them down and brought what they had caught to Mother Creator. Well, Jmukane was pleased. But finally, she said, enough of hunting. We need to grow things. We need farming. You see, the land is barren. Go upon the land and pull up roots and weeds. And we will create fields to grow maize. Well, the two brothers must do what Mother Creator said. So they went into the fields and began to toil, pulling up the weeds and the roots. Oh, but the work was hard. Boring. Why should we do this? We are hunters. So they put magic spells upon the tools and let them do the work. And away they went, the two brothers, into the forest with their blowpipe and blew down, shooting birds and small creatures from the canopy. And at the end of the day, they came back, and the field had been cleared, and they showed Mother Creator, and she was happy. But the creatures who lived in the forests had seen how the twin gods had tricked Shmukane, Mother Creator. This was not right. She created us. And during the night, the creatures of the forest they went about putting the roots and the weeds back into the ground where they had pulled them up. And in the morning, seeing this, Mukane was angry and she said to the brothers, you failed. Go again into the field and pull up roots and weeds. Do it without trickery. And the twin gods went into the fields. And the toil was hard as they pulled up the roots and the weeds it was so hard and so boring. So they went off into the forests with their blowpipes. And they blew down, shooting down with their poison darts, the birds and the small animals of the canopy. And when they returned, the fields had been cleared and they smeared their faces with dirt. See, grandmother, mother creator, see how we have toiled in the fields for you. During the night, you know what they did, the creatures of the forest? Yes, they came back and they began to put the roots and the weeds back into the ground where the brothers had pulled them up. But what the creatures of the forest did not know is that the brothers had laid a trap, a net. And suddenly the net was sprung and all of the creatures were caught and the brothers in the morning came laughing. They opened the net, creatures, ha-ha, <laughs> we tricked you, and the creatures fled in all directions. The deer got its tail caught in the net, but pulled free, leaving its tail behind, which is why when you look at a deer today, it has a very short tail. <laughs> and among the creatures, there was rat, but rat, 
the brothers seized. Hun Apu, magic hunter, said, Rat, we will destroy you. And he set fire to Rat's tail. But Rat cried out, Oh, do not destroy me. Oh, Hun Apu, magic hunter. Oh, Zubalanke, jaguar deer. Let me tell you the exploits of your father and your uncle who lived before you. Let me tell you of the sport of Talactali, the game of ball. And the brothers, they quenched the flames. The rat's tail was left naked with no fur upon it, which is why rats still have bald tails today. And rat told them tales of their uncle, Bukub Hunapu, and their father, Hun Hunapu, and how they had mastered the sport of Talactali. And Rat showed them the ball and told them many secrets. And soon the brothers began to play. Oh, and the sport was fine. They struck the ball with their hips and elbows and knees. And the ball bounced. They passed it with skill. They created stone courts with magic hoops in stone rings. Whoever could pass the ball through the hoop would be the winner. The brothers played with great skill. But you know, down, down below... In the underworld, the death demons heard of this. We destroyed their father. We destroyed their uncle. These twin gods must be destroyed. For too much power and skill they have. And one death and seven death, they sent a challenge, a message up to Jmukane, Mother Creator, in her hut. By that night, the brothers must come down to the underworld to play a match. Well, the message reached Mukane, but there was little time. Mukane took Laos, and she said to little Laos, Crawl away, Laos, and find my grandsons and tell them of the challenge. And Laos crawled away, on oh, crawled Laos. And on crawled Laos until Laos came to Toad. Toad, said Laos, swallow me and hop, Toad, hop, so the twin gods get the message in time that I carry. And Toad swallowed Laos. And Laos inside Toad's belly carried the message and on hopped Toad. <coughs> Quickly hopped Toad until he came to Snake. <coughs> snake, Snake, swallow me, Snake, for inside me I have Laos who carries a message for the twin gods. Slide, snake, slide, with such speed that the message reaches them on time. The snake swallowed toad. The on slid snake, sliding so fast, carrying inside his belly toad, and inside toad was loud with a message for the twin dog. On came Snake, sliding on until he came to Bok. Bok, messenger bird of Huracan, the great wind, the heart of sky, the quickest living creature in all creation. Bok, swallow me, Bok, swallow me, said Snake, for inside my belly I carry toad. And inside Toad there is Laos, who carries a message to the twin gods, Hun Apu and Zubalanke, magic hunter and jaguar deer. Swallow me and fly. And Vok, the great bird of the gods, flew down, powerful wings. Vok swallowed up Snake and flew with great power across the skies, searching for Hun Apu and Zubalanke, magic hunter and jaguar deer. 
and down flew Vok, and Vok, when he reached them, regurgitated Snake, and Snake regurgitated Toad, and Toad regurgitated and regurgitated, but Laos did not come out of his belly. From Toad's gums came the cry. I have hidden in Toad's gums, said Laos. Take me out. And out came Laos and told Magic Hunter and Jaguar Deer of the challenge. And the brothers travelled with all speed, quicker even than Vok, to their grandmother, Zwukane. And she told them of the challenge, that by nightfall they must be down in the underworld to play a match of ball against the death deeds. But their mother, Princess Blood, Greek, she said to them, My sons, you will surely die. Do not go. Oh, mother, said the sons, Oh, grandmother, we will survive. See, here for each of us, we plant a cane in the hut. As long as the cane is growing, you know that we are living. But if the cane withers and dies, you know that we are dead. One cane each was planted in the hut, and the two brothers set off on their journey. Will they survive? I wonder. Or will they be destroyed? Down and down they came to the underworld. And as they came, they arrived at the river of blood. The river of blood was full of demons, but Rat had told them of this. And they took their blowpipes and they put a magic spell on their blowpipes so that they grew and grew. And they climbed on top of their blowpipes and floated across the river of blood, untouched by the demons. And now arriving in the realms of the underworld, Zibalba, the two brothers went on. Hun Apu plucked a hair from his leg. And from the hair, he created Zan, Mosquito. And he said to Mosquito, fly and bite all of those that dwell in the realms of Zibalba. Find out which ones are made of wood. And if they are real, find out their names so they cannot have power over us. Zan, Mosquito, went flying. Flying, flying, and came to the death demons and bit them and found out their names. Seven death, one death, gathered blood, flying scab, bone skull, pack strap, and more and more, and returned to the brothers. And the brothers went with this knowledge. On they came, and there they saw two figures to greet them, but they knew these figures were wooden and did not show them any respect. And the death demons appeared, and they were angry. And they invited the brothers to sit upon a seat of honour, but the brothers knew from Rat that this seat would be burning hot, and they refused to sit. And the death demons were angry. And the brothers began to name the death demons that they had learned from Mosquito. You are seven death. You are one death. You are, you are flying scab. You are gathered blood. You are bone skull. You are pack strap. And on and on. And as they named these demons, so the demons' power was diminished. And the demons were angry. And the demons put them into the house of gloom, but there they could not be destroyed, they could not be sacrificed. Surely they will not survive a night in the house of gloom. Such was the darkness, utter blackness, they could see nothing. But the brothers, they created 
fireflies. And the fireflies lit up the darkness. <coughs> and the brothers said, for all time, fireflies, your task is to light the darkness. And at the end of the night, the brothers had survived, and the death demons and the death gods were not pleased. We challenge you to the sport, to Latley. They began to play. The death demons were full of cunning, trickery, deceit. They passed the ball, but they played many fouls upon the brothers. The brothers, however, were skillful. They had learned the art of the bouncing ball. They passed with shoulder and elbow, hip and knee. The ball flew around the court, bouncing off surfaces, and finally, with great skill, Hunapu passed the ball through the magic ring in the stone. And the twin gods had defeated the death demons, but the death demons were angry. Oh, you beat us, do you? Then as an honour to us, you must bring us four bunches of flowers, of white and black and red and yellow. Bring them to us by morning from our gardens, the gardens of the palace of Zibalba. Well, the brothers went to gather the flowers, but the death demons, they called forth their messengers, the owl messengers. Guard the fields. Do not let those two brothers enter. So the brothers saw this, that they could not enter. So Hunapu, magic hunter, and Zabalanke, jaguar deer, they created the first ants. A swarm of ants, and they sent them into the fields, gather the flowers. And the owl messengers could not prevent them, and returned with four bunches of flowers. And they said to the ants, for all time, your task will be to go and destroy crops. And they took these flowers to the death demons, and the death demons were full of anger. They took their owl messengers and they slit their mouths for their failure, which is why owls have hooked beaks as they do today. Now, the twin gods were given another trial. They were cast into the house of cold. froze, their hearts becoming ice. The death gods laughed outside. How could they survive the house of cold through the night? But the brothers, they created fire, and it burned in the old tree stumps in the house of cold. And they warmed themselves. Fire, we create you. All time you will warm man when he is cold. In the morning, the death demons, full of fury, they had been beaten once more, and they cast Zubalanke, Jaguadia, and Hunapu, magic hunter, into the house of blades. The blades prodded them, cut at them. The blades were sharp, lancing them. But the brothers spoke to the blades. Do not cut us here. And the brothers brought forth the flesh of animals. Slice and chop the meat of creatures. This is the task of blades. And so we give you flesh to cut for all time. And the blades cut at the flesh, and did not cut at the brothers. And they survived their night in the house of blades. And the death gods were purple with anger. And they took the brothers and they cast them into the house of jaguars. Jaguars came with their snarling bared teeth to bite and to destroy the brothers, to consume them. They brought forth 
huge quantities of bones. And they said, Jaguars, chew on these bones, gnaw on the bones and get the marrow. This is for you, for jaguars, to gnaw on bones which humans cast away for all time. And the jaguars gnawed on the bones. And did they destroy the brothers? The death demons were white with rage. And they cast the brothers into the house of bats. flying, swooping at them with their leathern wings, their sharp claws, their bared teeth, shrieking in the night. The brothers, they hid inside their blowpipes where the bats could not reach them. And the bats flew around shrieking until the cave fell silent. Hun Apu, magic hunter, crawled out from the blowpipe, so his head was showing. And Kamazot, ruler of bats, appeared and cut off his head. Hun Apu, magic hunter, destroyed. And far off above, in the hut, Mukane saw how the cane of Punaku withered and died. And the death demons, they entered that place and they took the head <coughs> of Punaku and they laughed as they threw it one to the other. Inside that darkness, Blanke looked at the dead body of his brother, headless. And he created possum. And he said to the creature, possum, possum, it is you that brings forth the dawn at the beginning of day with your cries. Delay, delay, do not cry. I must create magic. The jaguar deer, Zubalanke, he conjured up from a pumpkin a head. And he fixed that pumpkin head onto his brother's body. And with great skill and magic, he shaped the face of his brother. And he put in some kind of intelligence. And four times, Possum delayed dawn. And finally, Possum cried. And the death demons came. Now we challenge you to another match of Talathli. Zubalanke, Jaguar Deer, went with Hunapu with his pumpkin head to play the sport. And they used as the ball his brother's head. The death demons were tricked steps. They kicked the head. They passed it. They used foul play. And the brothers tried to defeat them. But within Hun Apu's pumpkin head, there was very little intelligence. And they played poorly. It was certain that they would lose. But at that moment, Conecho appeared. Conecho the rabbit, the trickster. And Conecho began to turn himself into the shape of the ball. And away he fled across the court, and the death demons chased after him. And when they had gone, Sir Balanke took his brother's head. And he took the pumpkin and he exchanged them. And brought back his brother to life as good as before, if not stronger and brighter. And when the death demons returned, the match continued, now playing with the pumpkin ball, upon which the Balanque had done some magic. And the ball bounced, and they passed it with skill with their shoulders and their knees and their hips. They passed the ball, and it bounced from the surfaces of that court. And finally, the ball flew with skill through the magic ring of the magic stone. And once more, the death demons were defeated. And the brothers, they said, we cannot be killed. We are stronger 
we have proved ourselves immortals. See, we cannot die. Make a fire, and there in the fiery depths of Zibalba, they cast themselves onto the fire and were burned. And their bones were ground, and the ash from their bones was cast into the river, and the death demons thought that they had won. On the fifth day, strange <coughs> men fish were perceived, and on the sixth day, from the river appeared two hideous old men. And one old man went at the other and destroyed him, and then brought him back to life better than before. And the other hideous old man destroyed the first, and then brought him back to life. And they went on, one killing the other. And this came to the attention of the death demons of Zibalba. How is it possible that they can bring themselves back to life? And they sent for them to be brought by their owl messengers. And when they stepped before the death demons, the death demons said, show us what you can do, how you can destroy and recreate each other. And they destroyed each other, restored each other to life. <laughs> you see, our palace, said the death demons, our palace in Zibalba can be greater. And one death and seven deaths said, destroy our palace and make it greater than before. And the two old men, they cast down the palace, so it fell to rubble. But within moments it appeared again, stronger and more magnificent and shining. Ha! said the death demons of Zibalba. Then, take our dog and make it stronger. And the death demons gave forth their best hunting dog. And the two brothers, they destroyed the dog, disguised as old men. And they restored the dog to life, and the dog was a greater hunter than it had been before. And they said, oh, take our slave. And they gave them their slave. And the brothers, the old men, they destroyed the slave and restored him to life, stronger than before. Oh, said the lords of Devalva, we can be great. Take us, kill us, and make us stronger still. Are you sure? Of course, we can be undefeatable. And the two old men looked at each other and they cut down and chopped to pieces the death demons of Zibalba. Among them, seven death and one death. And did they restore them to life? No. Of course they did not. <clears throat> they left them dead, and took their own forms, and showed how they were stronger and had defeated the evils <coughs> of the Zibalba. <coughs> and those that remained of Zibalba, they said, you paint your faces, turn you black and white, and you will go and rule over nothing but small creatures of the forests. And they were turned <coughs> to monkeys and went into the trees of the forests for your deceit, your dishonour, and your trickery. And the two brothers, they found the beast of their father, Hun Hunapu, and their uncle, Vuku Hunapu. They took Hun Hunapu and they set him in the sky as the rising sun which passed through the heavens and gave light to the world. And they took the body of their uncle, Bukupunapu, and they set him in the sky as the moon, the gentle moon, to shine silver and light up our nights. And then the two brothers left the underworld and returned to the world above. And once more, their two canes grew strong, Green and living. Smukane was proud. If we do honour to the two twin gods, Hunapu and Subalanke, magic hunter, and Jaguar deer, then all will be well in the world, and the Zabalbans cannot return to power. Remember the story.
story, the popple fool, the two twin gods, magic hunter and jaguar.